I am here today to talk to you about NetLogo and discuss some of the benefits of introducing students to computer science during high school. Um, I believe that introducing students to computers, not just as machines that they should be able to operate, but as devices that they can uh, design and control is highly valuable, both for the students and for the future. For one thing, teaching computer science um, reinforces concepts in mathematics. Students discover the need to apply things that they learned in the mathematics classroom um, in order to solve genuine problems. Um, functions, recursive definitions, sequences, and series are all revisited and reinforced. Computer science also teaches students to think algorithmically and creatively. Um, students discover that there's usually more than one solution to any one problem, and they begin to sense elegance in mathematics by pondering things such as the efficiency of an algorithm. Uh, computer science also introduces students to new mathematics. Um, they can begin to explore high-level concepts in math um, quickly and with ease. So I would not, now like to show you NetLogo as a particular example of a programming language that's uh, ideally suited for mathematical modeling and explorations in the classroom. Uh, perhaps some of you recall a language called Logo, which was designed in the 1960s and 1970s by um, protégé of Piaget, who was a mathematician and a computer scientist, computer scientist named Seymour Papert. And he believed that computers can be used as a tool to improve how children solve problems, children as young as seven. Uh, children were uh, taught how to command a small robot called Logo Turtle to move around the world and draw various shapes. That Logo is a descendant of Logo. Uh, today's turtle is virtual, but has much of the same properties. That Logo has a low threshold as a programming language, meaning there's virtually no programming experience required in order to get started. And it has a high ceiling, meaning there's lots of room for mathematical explorations. It is a little atypical for a programming language in that it is multi-agent based, um, and that it allows students to create models quickly and with ease. So let's take a look at some models. NetLogo comes in with a library of built-in models that uh, students can easily explore. For example, here we have a population model. Our world is populated by sheep, grass, and wolves. And we, the users, can decide how to set up our world. So for example, we can set up our initial population of sheep to be 100, <coughs> give them ample amounts of grass, and watch as the population grows exponentially. <laughs> or we can place environmental restrictions, limit the amount of grass available, and watch logistic growth develop. Or finally, you can introduce a predator, namely wolves, and watch behavior predicted by the well-known predator-prey differential equations. The mathematics behind the predator-prey model is complicated, requires solving a pair of first-order differential equations. However, the code required to generate the same kind of behavior is little over a page, requires virtually no advanced mathematical knowledge, and minimal syntax knowledge. Here we, we see the Mandelbrot set being generated. Our turtles do a random walk through the complex plane, computing an, an additional iteration of f of z equals z squared plus c at every given step. A count is main, maintained of the number of iterations computed, and that count is translated into a color, giving the Mandelbrot set its distinctive look. Again, students can explore various parameters and see the resulting changes in the model. Here we have a simple cellular automata model that's made to simulate voting. At first, um, votes or colors are randomly distributed and evenly distributed. Um, every square is then asked to take um, count of its neighbors and see what their opinion is and watch, uh, and watch what happens in over repeated voting cycles. And you will see the development of voting blocks that are surprising and arise uh, spontaneously. NetLogo is particularly suited for watching uh, emergent behavior. Uh, this model shows how a population of fireflies can synchronize their flashes using only information from individual fireflies. Um, similar behavior governs the beating of our hearts. The mathematics behind how synchrony can spontaneously break out in a complex mathematical system um, is very complicated, requires nonlinear dynamics, but students can easily explore such a model and perhaps get excited about mathematics. I would like now to show you a couple of student models 
to see that creating similar models is quite easy and students can easily produce such, um, such things. So here we have a stock market simulator. Uh, we can buy stocks, we can sell <coughs> stocks, we can evade the IRS, uh, and we can make decisions based on fluctuations in the market. Mm, this was designed by students. There are all sorts of other options. You can <laughs> launder money, money from the mafia, and uh, I have just made negative $544. <laughs> I don't think I want to play again. Uh, of course, a lot of our students enjoy games, mm -hmm. and so they can create games with ease. This is a simulation of the Zero Wing arcade game from the 1980s. This was designed by a student. Uh, by a student. Um, you can notice that the spaceship follows the cursor, and so do the enemies. And I am not very good at this either. Um, I have been teaching computer science for only a semester, but have been amazed by the progress that some students made and make and the excitement that they develop over learning how to create mathematics and how to explore mathematics. Uh, I'm here to sort of promote the teaching of computer science as a means of exploring math and of <coughs> learning new math. Um, I think NetLogo is particularly suited for this, and I encourage you to explore it. Thank you.